Do you know that one in three women are currently experiencing domestic violence? And do you know that about one in four men or one in 10 men are also experiencing domestic violence? So that's to tell you that domestic violence is a big problem. Domestic violence is a big issue. I might, you might be like, eh, is it really a big issue? I can categorically tell you that at least one person that you know and is close to you is experiencing it. Not just among the blacks, even among the whites, among the brown, anybody of color, they're experiencing domestic violence. And this violence could be in various forms. It could be within their dating. It could be a dating violence. It could be intimate partner violence between spouses. It could be gender violence. It could be siblings violence. It could be any more violence. But please, this violence exists. And at least one in three women have experienced and are experiencing domestic violence. And one in four women, one in four men, I mean, are also experiencing domestic violence. So this will bring me to defining domestic violence. Domestic violence or intimate partner violence, as some people call it, is abuse or aggression that occurs in a romantic relationship. Intimate partner. Imagine when the person you feel you're supposed to trust or you're supposed to rely on is you know, applying violence on you, is being violent on you, is oppressing you, is beating you, is kicking you, is in a form of coercion on you, then there is a problem. Then there is a problem. So please, these are the issues. I know I love saying that statement, but really, these are the issues. And I was mentioning different types of domestic violence or intimate partner violence and we have the physical violence it is when a person eats or try to hurt a partner by eating kicking or using another type of physical force if your partner always uses always uses his hand on your face i mean slaps you that is a form of violence if he always kicks you that is a form of violence it is a physical violence if he always you know what's the word use planks use spoon use anything within his reach to eat you then that is physical violence. Please, you are sitting down on fire and you need to escape from it. So the next one is sexual violence. Sexual violence is forcing or attempting to force a partner to take part in a sexual act, sexual touching or non-physical sexual activity. So you just like, eh, you must do it. Ah, it is violence. If it's coercing you to have sex, you can't even call it rape because when you when you do not give consent to it, but you forces you, that's sexual violence. It is forcing or attempts to force a partner. That's sexual violence. And that one is stalking. Stalking is a pattern of repeated or, or unwanted attention and contact by a partner that causes fear or concern for one's safety or the safety of someone close to you. So if someone close to you or yourself is experiencing or you know someone is stalking you, or you are like, ah, Someone is watching me. This person is watching me. And you've been having this feeling over and over again. That's talking. That's talking. And you're already afraid that, ah, someone is watching you and you're always afraid. It's showing a thing of concern. It's not even be for you. It could be for someone close to you. It could be for your friend. It could be for your, it could be for your enemy. That's a problem. That's really a problem. And that's a form of violence. And another one is emotional or psychological aggression. Is use of verbal and non-verbal communication with the intent to harm a person mentally or emotionally or to exert control over a partner. If your partner or someone that you love, it could be for your friends, and they're always saying negative statements, always using words, always using words that seemingly seem as if they're encouraging you, that's a problem. I remember my friend was sharing with me that some people are dating someone or like some guys use they will get you word, but also balance it. They will lower your self-esteem and also increase your self-esteem. For example, they will say, ah, I like fat girl, but you can lose some weight. If you are not someone that pick words, you won't see it. They will say, ah, do you know they are too short? But, or you can say, ah, do you know they are too short? But I don't mind you. Are you kidding me? You just said I am short. Or you just said I am fat. Or the teacher will be like, eh. eh. Yeah, so what you said makes sense, so, but you're not intellectually sound. Ah. You just said I'm not intellectually sound. Don't bother saying what I said makes sense. So 
So these are the things that some people go through because some some people use these words. It doesn't have to even be in words. It could be non-verbal. Their eyes. Then we physically present. I've said it. I've said the one thousand words. Their facial expression. I've said one million words. And these are the issues. So IPV is connected to other forms of violence. Intimate partner violence is connected to other forms of violence. And these things does not only have influence on the partner. Does not only have influence on even the person victimizing others. It's also have influence on the economy. Because if one in three women are experiencing domestic violence or sexual violence, then how will they seek help? Because we'll keep spending money on addressing violence as a country. We'll keep spending money on settling issues in the police force. We'll keep spending money on taking care of hospital bills. The money that could be channeled into helping the family, helping the family economy, helping to address other issues. The money will be spent in the court of law. The money will be spent in the hospital because you're always like, ah, she's always having wounds. As one of these people, some of these victims, it's the way they cover up for their partner for me. So I'm going to be sharing some statistics with us. About 41% of women and 26% of men experience or have experienced or are in contact or have experienced sexual violence, physical violence or stalking or even psychological aggression. They've experienced it. And many of them are living with the PTSD. They are living with the trauma of the experience because they're going to be projecting it on their other partners. Children in these relationships or children in this relationship are going to be either come out from it as a victor or come out of it as a victim. As a victim in a case where the girls will feel like, oh, my guy has to be beating me, has to be eating me, has to be experiencing a form of violence on me. Or the children come out as a victor and say that, oh, I don't want to do like this. I don't want to be like this. How do I come out of this? I don't want to be like my father. I don't want to be like my mother. I don't want to be like someone that always uses the wrong words. I don't want to be like someone that always, you know, that always eats my partner. Or they always stalk my partner. You know, it can it goes both ways. And sometimes some people don't want to relate with children because of that fact. So if we say that shown domestic violence, it goes beyond you. It goes beyond you being a victim. It goes beyond you being a predator, being a person oppressing, being the oppressor. It goes beyond that. It affects you. It affects the victim's mental health. It lowers the victim's self-esteem. It lowers the victim's education because the man don't want person might not be able to you know pursue your education again and then won't we'll find a means of you know striving in his career again because like ah, what is there there is no point ah there's really a point there's really a point ipv starts early and continues throughout people's life and if care is not taken people won't learn to like know that this, there is a problem or there is an issue about this so what are the consequences of intimate partner violence it can lead to death domestic violence can lead to death it can lead to injury some people have lost their eyesight. Some people have lost their face are deformed. You no, know, when your partner is angry, you mistakenly pour acid on you, or mistakenly pour hot oil. Not mistakenly, intentionally pour hot oil. Intentionally, you no, know, use this iron, hot iron on you, and you're like, eh, it will change. Please receive sense in Jesus' name. It will not change. Get out. Even if it's going to change, we're watching him change from outside, not inside that relationship, not inside that marriage. Watch him change from outside. And if it's your friends, you should help yourself with that friend. Your friend is always someone that eats you. Your friend is always someone that smacks you. All these things, they are issues though. These things affect the heart because when you begin to have high blood pressure, these things affect the muscles, affect the bones because in a certain way, it keeps eating. It uses a very, mean, a very large stick to eat your arm and you broke your humerus or you broke your femur before you know it or you broke your hip bone before you know it. It leads to big issues, and this thing can lead to other issues like depression, like PTSD, post trauma syndrome. Can also lead to mental problems. Person need to experience hallucination. Can't be like, ah, everybody hates me, nobody likes me. And once one is stuck into that phase, then there is a problem. And that one is that there is a higher risk of engaging in behaviors, or this can lead to addiction, such as drinking, smoking, you know, sexual risky activities, because they're like, ah. Was there? Imagine someone that have been that have experienced sexual violence. Person might lead to multiple sexual, might begin to have multiple sexual partner. I'm like, ah, what was there? I've experienced it, and these are the issues. It leads to serious problem, and the person might also, you know, might begin to marginalize themselves, so begin to feel like ah, nobody likes me. I need to separate themselves. So begin to feel isolated, and it leads to other serious issues. So I'm going to be sharing lastly on how we can stop it, how we can help people 
that are victims or that are also oppressors because some oppressors actually want to stop and some of that are victims of domestic violence or victims of intimate partner violence also want to you know come out of these and have a better self-esteem because anybody that is oppressing so i feel like because you have low self-esteem because you have a healthy self-esteem you'll be eating your partner you'll be beating your partner you'll be using derogatory words you'll be kind to your partner because this person is someone that is close to you because really these are the issues so to prevent these things i would say we need to promote healthy respectful and non-violent relationship your relationship can be healthy it can be helpful it can be respectful it can be respectful you should be respectful to each other you should be kind to one another show empathy if you have any issue communicate to your partner you don't have to your communication should not be by eating it should not be by using the regulatory words be kind with your words to your partner be ld like these things can help another one is that you know if you are someone that you need help please seek therapy seek therapy if you need help you can also send me a mail via the mailbox send mail and i will have a question with you i can even link you up with people that can help i can also go on google go and search for non governmental organizations that help address these issues and they always they update their page regularly so that you're like ah numbers are not up to date most of those numbers are actually reachable reach out to them reach out to their email they will definitely come and help you i think you're an oppressor that want to come out too they will also go on they're also going to help you too because they don't just help the victims they also help the oppressor too so please help us encourage you know ld relationship help us encourage ld relationship between our spouses between people that are in this relationship and um another one you know there are many issues that causes this intimate battle violence we have cultural factors where culture says that oh a guy has to show that he has power that is why i'm doing this mm -mm, mm -mm. no another one is social factors where victims are often blame or they are abused if they speak out some people don't want to speak out they're like ah people begin to look at them badly who will not associate themselves with them please speak out please speak out there are one million one people for you than those that are against you you never can tell who is even going to help you to fight to the very end so that your oppressor can be arrested and your oppressor can be it can also be you know taken can also be taken up use the media space use the power of politics speak to someone that has power or if you don't want to have someone that has power speak to your religious leaders speak to your leaders in your, in your neighborhood speak to people people are willing to help and also say seek legal help seek legal help you know, legal factor also one of the issues. When like legally, a man always try to feel on top, or police always want to oppress, always want to oppress all these law enforcement people. They don't want to show that they have power. So before you know it, they are already victimizing people. They are using their get you words. Because some people, when they see someone that has power, they always they run. And another thing is economical factor. These are also causes of intimate partner violence, where um, if one partner is not financially stable. Then that partner tends to victimize because not only, it's not only on the guy side to also on the female side where the female will need to oppress the man like eh hey, not say you are bringing any money to the table not say we are providing for the family i'm the breadwinner and maybe the guy is just out of job just for a while or he's finding it you know difficult financially or can even provide for a particular financial need and you need to oppress your partner please see yourself seek help seek help and that one is environmental factor there are some areas where it's normal for people to oppress themselves it is a normal thing you no know, growing up in an abusive environment and having weakness or experience domestic abuse can make someone more likely to be abusive also victim of domestic violence i've already said these issues and um i've thought about the issues you no know, intimate partner violence can lead to stis you are wondering how the person can start resulting in multiple sexual partner it can lead to loss of eyes loss of vision loss of years when your partner eats your eyes eats your ears that's an issue it can lead to lasting physical damage where the person might, might have to use crushes a person might you know have to do with skin burn because of anger this is what anger can lead to can also lead to mental health conditions such as PTSD, PTSD, depression, anxiety, substance abuse. It can lead to physical health problems such as heart problems, digestive difficulties, reproductive issues. Imagine if a man says that you must go and do tubal ligation. Before you know it, the man can, the man or she, you must move your womb. And you must, no one's some, what's some. These things are just, but then we need to, we need to dig deep into the issues causing this violence. You realize that. 
these things are not adding up mm. let me just keep quiet and that issue is low self-esteem it leads to low self-esteem it leads to trust issue and it even leads to it leads to the person finding it difficult to concentrate at work or in school and i've already mentioned how we can help them we can help them by reporting to the nearest to the nearest no center that addresses this issue to all these non-governmental organizations to international organizations report to them now also say um help them be there for them don't victimize them don't stigmatize them i mean the victims and if you know anybody that's an oppressor that wants to actually stop victimizing their partner i would say please help them show them love many of them are love deprived show them the way to therapy center separate them from the partner that they are victimizing against because if you separate them no separation in a way try to reset our brain and tell them to seek help seek help seek help those that eh, i want to be there for him so he can change no be far away and watch him change be far away and watch him. when you see that he has changed and you're seeing the signs that he has changed or she has changed then you can come together if you guys are already married and if you guys are not married speak to your leg hmm? take that exit and leave you will definitely see someone better because by the time a guy starts saying that you can never say anybody that is better than me ah that's the day you should start living because ah nobody can you can never say that's better than me nobody can date you nobody can marry you that's the regulatory words and those words are not good and i want to address signs of intimate partner violence the signs are numerous but I'll just i just mentioned some some like being visibly upset so that you just like the person gets upset easily the person is always anxious the person if you just touch the person the person will be like the person's act might skip a bit that as if someone wants to eat a person might always want to like take over that's that's a, those are signs that the person might be victimized the person start displaying changes you know, the person that was normally always cheerful begin to a person that had a very high self-esteem begins to experience low self-esteem it might be the present of someone new in that person's life that is oppressing the person a person changes the way they dress Maybe not because that they really want to change or because that ah, that is what my partner wants. Yes, you can do what your partner wants, but also still expressing yourself in a very creative way. Another one is the person is always you know checking in with their partner, always saying, What are you doing right now? Send me a screenshot, send me a video where you are, send me a picture where you are. Ah, when that's a problem. My sister, that is a sign, that's a problem. If a girl is always like, What do you do? Where are you? Who are you speaking with? Are you with a lady? Is a guy around you? Ah. Those are the issues. Those are the issues. If they're always nervous or scared around their partner, that's another problem. The person is always having injuries like black eyes, bruises, you know, cuts, wounds, and it is very awful. And I used my head to hit the wall, and bike fell me down, and there was an accident. Is, are you the only one? Then you start suspecting there's an issue. And so that was not the least is that if they're always making injury excuses for their injury, <laughs> and I fell down, I bumped into the door, I bumped into someone. I mistakenly use iron to press my hand. Mistakenly use iron. So you will willingly put iron on your body. Even if it's going to be a mistake, it's, ah, it's, it's a sign that there's a problem. So please seek up. Seek up. Don't, don't, don't stay. Don't keep all these things in. Don't embody them for too long. Speak up. People are willing to help you. And your partner is telling you that nobody will help. Nobody will be there for you. Please. Somebody will help. Somebody will be there for you. Don't say, I have to be there when it's changing. Mm -mm stay in another place i mean watching him change from afar then if you still need to come back in come back in and address the issue i know you are like eh i'm not i don't see that my because of my children if don't be because of your children if you end up dying your children will live long and not to be opposite them i was reading a story in the course of the week where a man the man i was just that he was being selfish the he, the woman is a career person and this man did not allow her to get helps at all she had four children. She always woke up in the morning to take care of the family. The woman that's a girl's help, I know this house, but someone that assisting them at home. The man said no. The woman walked, 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 walked. She died. The woman remarried about six months to one year later. But shall I shock you? The new person he married brought in two houses and he could not talk. So I'll say, woman, please sometimes speak up. Speak up. Seek help. There's only your family that can help you. Speak to a religious leader that can help you. Speak to a police enforcement agent or to a law enforcement agent, either a lawyer or someone that can help you. Just seek help. Please seek help. If you enjoyed this video, do us give it a thumbs up. Share this video to your friends. Share this video to anybody that knows that is experiencing domestic violence. Like this video. And now we'll see you guys in the next one.